everyone, my name is Sam and welcome back to my channel. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a thumbs up. If you took a look at this title and saw that it was called Arcmageddon number one, that is because I got a lot of arcs. Professionally, I am a librarian, so I get to do like professional development and all that kind of stuff. Normally like big conferences and that kind of stuff where publishers are normally there happily giving out arcs. Specifically at the end of January, at the beginning of, slash beginning of February, I got to go to the OLA, Ontario Library Association, Super Conference in Toronto, Ontario. I was really happy to get to go back to my home area. I'm originally from there. Well, not Toronto, but the area. So I got to see my family and we got to go to the Royal Ontario Museum, which has a Viking exhibit on right now. So if you get to go or in the area, go, I think it's there till April. So the conference had a bunch of awesome like professional development sessions. I got so much out of it and I have so many ideas for work now. But um, one of like personally my favorite part was the ARCs. So at most conferences, there are a group of people called the Dewey Divas, some called, sometimes called the Dewey Divas and the Dewey Dude, where major publishers and distributors will come, they'll have, you know, 15 or 20 books that they want to plug and say, you know, these are new books coming out that they would be good for, you know, STEM focused content or book clubs, and just promo new things coming out that maybe aren't necessarily like massive, huge, you know, Sarah J Mass kind of stuff. Those sessions normally include them giving you a couple arcs, but then I wandered around the expo at the OLA Super Conference and there were like a bunch of publishers there giving away arcs and goodie bags and swag bags and oh my god. So I ended up having to pay an extra hundred dollars because of my my oh, first of all to, I know what my luggage was overweight. I was expecting that. But a hundred dollars for an overweight bag fee on top of the $25 checking it? That is more than literally buying another bag and checking another bag. How does that make any financial sense whatsoever? Okay? Okay, mini rant over because my flights back were an absolute nightmare and I don't like traveling with Air Canada for this very reason. I got them back. I think I brought back about 30-ish arcs. Some of them were just ones that I picked up and was like, oh, I know my coworker would like this. I'll pass it along. Um, some of them were just like, oh my god, YA arcs, and they're for me. Um, a good chunk of them were books that I had requested on NetGalley or Italy's and got rejected for, so I picked them up there. Um, a good chunk of them were books that, or a couple of them were books that have since come out, so they were just kind of unhauling the leftover arcs. They can't really do anything since the finished copy is out. And then some of them were books that I had heard of, just other people talking about, or I saw it on like the 2019 Goodreads list last year or whatever coming out. And some of the covers just looked really cool and I haven't read the summary yet. So that is what this video is a mashup of. By the way, just before I even start this stuff, there's, especially if you live in Ontario, your libraries are doing so many amazing things. I would, add, if you haven't been there in a while, go see. Even if your small library maybe isn't doing anything, go to like the next big city area that you can. Programming and that stuff is normally free. They're doing so many, so many cool, cool things and kind of leading a lot of libraries, especially in Canada, on just outside of the box traditional programs and outreach and all that stuff. So check them out. You have so many amazing resources with your libraries. So the first arc that I picked up was The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. I am so excited I got this copy. I was actually approved for the e-arc and read the e-arc of it uh, like a week before I left, but I loved it. And I am going to be picking up a finished copy because the finished copy is going to have like the letters like lifted and everything. And it's so, oh my God. If you haven't heard about this one, I'd be kind of surprised, but it is kind of a hocus pocusy. We have an alternating kind of timeline throughout here. We have three sisters in um, Salem era in, and uh, they're accused of being witches. And it's kind of like information leading up to them being accused. And then it's like modern day times where every summer the sisters inhabit the bodies of three women, girls in town, and then they drag and uh, and drowned three boys in town and it happens every summer so that it's kind of like who's the sister who's been embodied kind of thing and this book I cried at the end it was just so so good and it does have insta love but I really really liked it so Love this book. Oh, before I forget, this comes out March 9th. I also managed to pick up an arc, one of the few arcs, I think I only saw four or five of these, of Toil and Trouble, just edited by Jessica Spotswood. This was actually one of my most anticipated for 2018. Um, and I am so excited for this. It doesn't come out until August, August 28th. So I was actually kind of surprised to see the arcs there already. But it is a compilation of, you know, 
witches and witchcraft. And Jessica Spotswood uh, or was the editor of the um, A Tyranny of Petticoats anthology, which I really, really enjoyed. And now we also have Tess Sharp in on this. So I am super excited to get to this because it is not coming out till August. It's not at the top of my list to get to, but I am so excited to read this. And I'm happy that I managed to get a physical copy when I put a request in. It is on NetGalley for request. I put in a request in like a month ago and I still haven't heard anything. So I got a physical copy. I actually talked to the publisher's rep there and they only brought one copy of this book and I snatched it as soon as I saw it. I got a physical e-art copy of Ace of Shades and I am so excited. I almost feel like part of the excitement is the fact that I know so many people who requested it and everyone got rejected for the arc. So I panicked and squealed and ran and like I was ready to plow through people to grab this arc. But it comes out April 10th. I read Amanda Foodie's Daughter of the Burning City. I didn't love the plot, but I did enjoy the writing. So I'm super curious. And I was also talking to the publisher and found out this is actually the first book she wrote. And she shopped it around. No one picked it up. Then she shopped around Daughter of the Burning City. It got picked up and she offered to slap this on at the, like as the part of the deal. And then I saw on her Twitter that this is actually going to be a trilogy. She's extended a contract. So I am so excited for this book. I know that there's like... A woman's mother, for some reason, gets, like, put into, like, a less than great situation kind of crime area. And, like, yeah, so she has to, like, try and save her mother while people are trying to abuse the situation and all that stuff. But I am just super excited about this. Um, yeah, goes on sale April 10th. I don't own a finished copy of this, which is why I'm super curious and picked it up. Um, Moxie. It is out on, uh, it, it, the finished copy is out for sale. It's been out for quite a while. I feel like it came out in December. No, sorry. September last year. So this is a leftover arc from their kind of campaign. Um, I know this is supposed to be like a feminist high school story and the premise sounded interesting. It just wasn't something I was going to like push people away in pre-order. So I'm really curious to see exactly, and it's blurred by Amy Poehler, which makes me even more curious. I managed to pick up a physical e-arc of Slate by Jennifer Somersby. I actually also got approved for the e-arc of it. I haven't gotten to it yet. It goes on sale April 3rd. There, This was actually originally a release on, I think it was Wattpad, and it got really, really good reviews, positive, so it got picked up by a publisher, um, so it's been kind of cleaned up, and I think that was a couple years ago, so now um, it's two or three years since it was officially, or it was published on Wattpad, so it's been cleaned up, given a pretty new cover, and I just know that it's kind of a, um, there's circus and chaos and magic and that kind of stuff, which... I like the concept of circuses, however, I haven't loved all of the books that I've read, kind of like Daughter of the Burning City. So I'm I'm really curious to see um, exactly what I think of this. And Jennifer Somersby is a Canadian author. She lives in Vancouver. So super excited to support that. Crimson is a middle grade book by Arthur Slade. I had never heard of this author, never heard of this title. It was mentioned in my Dewey Diva session, saw the cover and was like, that sounds interesting. And I always love middle grade YA books kind of thing. So um, it goes on sale May 8th and... There is like a woman is supposed, she thinks she's going to be killed and then she runs away and then she finds out to kind of like spite her, the person that was going to kill her is killing her mom and her sister. So she comes back to try and free them. Um, I think it's like supposed to be set in like Middle Eastern setting or influenced mythology or something like that. As you can tell, I haven't really read much of the summary. I just remember what the Dewey Divas told me. So I'm just super excited about this. And I think two days after I came back from my conference, it went up on Edelweiss for a request. So if you do want that. I also picked up an arc of Daughters of the Winter Queen by Nancy Goldston. I had not heard a thing about this. Um, it actually wasn't even mentioned in the session that I was at where I got this. But it sounds really interesting. And the cover looks right up my alley. I'm a sucker for historical fiction. Uh, the Tudors and like the French Revolution and like all those. I'm just always interested in giving those kind of books a try. So yeah, uh, Four Remarkable Sisters, The Crown of Bohemia, and The Enduring Legacy of Mary Queen of Scots. So I know there's like, it, there's like four or so sisters and it's like what they manage to do after they're kind of married out, I kind of think. Um, it comes out April 10th. This was in a swag bag, and I probably wouldn't have grabbed it if it wasn't in a swag bag, and I didn't take the swag bag already, but Only Humans by Sylvan Neuval, and that is simply because this is a sequel to, I think it's called Sleeping Giants. That book has been everywhere. I just have not gotten it. I haven't picked it up. There's a massive wait list through my library for it, so I hadn't touched it, but this, now that I have it, it comes out May 1st. Um, I'm going to try and read Sleeping Giants in April-ish. If I can, if I can get to it before that, great. But 
my my goal is probably April and then to pick this up immediately and and go from from there if I like the Sleeping Giants book. But yeah, May 1st. I hadn't seen e-arcs or any physical arcs of this book anywhere. So when I saw it, I did a squeal and the girl beside me went like, are you okay? And then I ran and picked up this. Daughters of the Storm by Kim Wilkins. I know nothing of this book. I can't... I know I've read the summary. I've seen the cover several times on Goodreads. I've read it and been like, that sounds amazing. Hit want to read. And then it's out of my brain. As I've said before, my memory is horrible. But saw the cover and remembered that. It's coming out March 6th, I think. I'll link in the description box down below. And at this point, I feel like my inability to remember it is a sign that I should go into it totally blind. But I am so excited about this book. I don't know that I'm going to get to it before it gets published, just because March 6th is not that far away. But it's on my list of books to get to in February if I finish my February TBR. So, yeah! I also managed to pick up an arc of Tess of the Road by Rachel Hartman, who is once again a Canadian author. I read Serafina. Oh, wow! Those are not the covers I have of Serafina. I like those more. Those are so cool. Oh, those are the new paperbacks. Oh, I'll have to look into that. I like those. Um, I didn't love Serafina. It wasn't bad. However, I know I was not in the right mood to read that type of book, but I did read it. And I plan on reading Shadow Scale eventually, but I thought this was a completely different series, but they explained to us in the Dewey Diva session that this is like one of the characters from Serafina in doing like their own story kind of thing. So I am, I'm super curious about this. And I also kind of re want to reread Serafina and make myself like it to get those covers. Cause whoa, they're pretty. But yeah, so um, this book comes out February 27th. So this month, oh, I'm just really hoping I like this book. I really, really want to. I also managed to pick up an arc of All Out, the no longer secret stories of queer teens throughout the ages. I had so many people when I posted that I got this say, can you mail it to me once you're done? There's so many people interested in this book. And I honestly hadn't heard of this book until the beginning of January. And then I saw the arc and the cover is so pretty and I squealed. And then I saw all the authors. Um, I know that it's different time periods and different genres. Um, you know, it says from a retelling of The Little Red Riding Hood set in war-torn 1870s Mexico featuring a transgender soldier, to two girls falling in love while mourning the death of Kurt Cobain. Like, there's just things all over the place. And I'm so excited for to read this. It comes out February 27th. I don't know if I'm going to get to it before that, but it's on my list that hopefully I will be able to get to it in, Feb in, in March at the latest. Um, but it includes stories from Delia Adler, Sarah Fariza, Tessa Gratton, who is the author of The Queens of Innisleer, which I'm reading right now, um, Sean David Hutchinson, Cody Kaplinger, and Mackenzie Lee, which everyone is in love with right now, um, Melinda Lowe, Neela Magruder, Anne-Marie McLemore, everyone knows her, Talor K. Magia, Natalie Parker, Alex Sanchez, Kate Skella, Tess Sharp, Robin Talley, Scott Tracy, and Elliot Wake. So I am just so excited for this book and to try and get to it as soon as I can in the next month or so. I'm so excited! I know ARCs got sent out in the Fairy Loot box a couple months ago, but it didn't have the cover on it, and I don't subscribe to Fairy Loot, unfortunately. But Claire Legrand, Furyborn, it's the first book in the Imperium trilogy. The cover is amazing. It's one of my most anticipated books of 2018. I know that there's, like, assassins and medieval fantasy and that's that's all i need to know and then this cover so i'm 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 so excited for this book oh my god comes out may 22nd um i'm gonna try and read it in april or so um and i'll probably buy a finished copy depending how much i love it but look at the cover look at the cover this book was handed out uh, i think as a part of the dewey diva session um the prince got or sorry the price guide to the occult by leslie walton um it comes out can't find anything other than March. Just as March everywhere. So March 2018 sometime. But I think if I remember correctly, there's like a family that powers skip every other generation or so. And our main character wants powers but doesn't have them or something like that. It's not a long book. It just sounded really cool and quirky and funny. Um, and definitely dark, but like the concept sounded interesting. So I am just really, really excited to to give this one a read. I was also, they were like giving these ones away like candy too, just because the book is finally out now, but Zenith by uh, Sasha Osberg and Lindsay Cummings. I haven't heard great 
things about this book. So, um, and I'm not a big sci-fi person in general. Like, Illuminae seems to be, like, kind of an exception for me. Um, but I haven't heard, and, and it's not, like, the plot that I haven't heard great things about. I've heard just very consistent issues from everyone that it's the writing is not good. So I am a little scared. It came out uh, at the beginning of January. Um, but I have a couple people that were like, I've heard not good things. Can you read it and tell me what you think of it? And then I got the, the book for free. So I'm going to try and get to it when I feel like I'm on like a swing mojo. I'm reading really fast kind of thing and hope for the best. I've seen some amazing, funny reviews for it though. So I'm hoping, hoping something good will come out of it or that Fingers crossed, I'll actually enjoy it. This book just looked adorable and the title sounded interesting. I have not read the summary in total, like, open honesty. But, Ernstein Catastrophe Queen by Meryl Wyatt. This just looks adorable. It comes out in August, so I'm not super worried about it coming right away. But, it's a jam uh, James Patterson. Honestly, James Patterson is releasing, like, I know he's, like, doing, like, trying to lend his name to, like, like kind of not well-published voices of, you know, different either sexual orientation or gender or you know race and he's doing an amazing job he's publishing a lot of of content and i'm so so happy that authors like him are doing that rick riordan's doing the same thing he's publishing something with his uh roshani chonsky i think it is that's coming out soon in middle grade as well with a i think it, an indian main character it's a middle grade contemporary mystery where our main character is helping solve um you know some mysterious going ons that happen at the um Mick, oh, Mick Gillicuddy, House for Elderly and Retired Artists, both performing and otherwise. The cover is adorable, and I'm a sucker for middle grades. So I am just really excited. And honestly, I want to support James Patterson and all this stuff that he's doing, because I am really, really blown away and really happy that someone like him is doing that. That's how you change kind of the all-white author kind of stereotype that is, well, not necessarily a stereotype, that all-white representation that we have around published literature a lot so I am so excited to try and get to this hopefully I can get to it before the summer but if not I got the summer it's short it's a middle grade and it's a nice little little one so it's so so excited for this book the cover totally sold me on this one but it is another middle grade but Arlo Finch in the Valley of Fire by John August it comes out February I think 27th no sorry February 6th so it's actually already out as I'm filming this um it's a middle grade I know that there is like magic fantasy adventure as happens in middle grade our main character is a little boy arlo finch uh in colorado so i know that our main character has friends in like the rangers he lives near a forest and he's trying to like harness magical powers there or something like that it just sounded so much fun and the cover is beautiful they did an amazing job on that so i am i'm just really excited to give this one a go hopefully in march if not april i want to try and get to it before that because it looks like snow and mind you, I love a candle. We'll have snow till like the end of May. But yeah, I promise we're almost done. Now remember, I had to pack all of these. Like just, just remember that. But I also managed to pick up a copy of Ending the Last um, by Catherine Applegate. This is another middle grade. Um, it comes out, where did it go? I thought I saw it specifically somewhere. I know it's May something. May 1st, ha, I was right. I know our main character for some reason ends up alone away from her friends and family. I don't know if they get killed or what, but she is like considered like the endling, like the last of her like species. And she has to start going through a war-torn kingdom to get answers or something like that. It sounds really, really interesting. The cover, even without like the actual like design or anything on it, looked really cool. And Catherine Applegate sounds like a really familiar author. I must have read her before. I am just really excited to give this one a go. And if I like it, then I can get it for my birthday when it, right after it comes out in May. So yeah. And the last book in this long haul um, was Clairvoyant, which is a plan, you know, Clairvoyant. It is a middle grade. As you can tell, I'm on this like middle grade like accumulation acquisition kind of binge it comes out oh where'd it go may 15th right after my birthday but it is a middle grade our main character her mom i believe this is set in Can in toronto i want to say the author is canadian as well 
Yeah, no, I think it's in Toronto because it says like um, they moved to a tiny apartment in Kensington Market, which no, there's one in Toronto. But our main character goes to her. Her and her mom are out on their own now. Their, her grandmother moved to Florida, as snowbirds tend to do <laughs> in Canada. Um, so they moved to their tiny own apartment in Kensington, and she is going to her new middle school. And there, she wants to take on the newspaper and do hard hitting journalism. And she gets stuck by the editor doing all of the horoscope section. And then things get interesting when all of her predictions through the horoscope start coming true. And people think she has like magical powers and everything. So it sounds so adorable. The cover is amazing. The name is like the title is just awesome. And it's, it's really short. I don't even know if it's 200 pages. It's a couple pages over 200. So I am going to try and get to this, slip it in. It's like I said, it's a really short book. I could easily read this in one evening. So I'm going to try and fit this in in my February somewhere, but likely March just because I have other books that I could keep, you know, bumping it. So, but yeah, I'm so excited for this book in particular. So those are all of the books that I picked up at the OLA Super Conference in Toronto and brought back and didn't give away to co-workers and friends. Also keep an eye on this channel and my social media because there are some books there that I know are pretty high, like highly anticipated ones. And once I finish them, if I finish them early enough, maybe I'll do a couple of giveaways for the ARCs and that way. I can share the love of ARCs. Um, but yeah, make sure to check the description box down below for links to all of these books, as well as links to my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.